Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. In December 2019, I released my non-fanboy review of the DJI Mavic Mini. As I was doing follow-up to that review, I learned that a few things have been updated with the Mini since December. Watch this episode to learn how DJI has improved three key issues with the Mavic Mini that make it an even better value than it was before. This episode is part of a series of videos I'm doing on the DJI Mavic Mini. A link to that playlist is in the upper right corner of the screen. If you plan to buy a Mavic Mini, follow the link in the description below and order direct from DJI. Now, on to this episode. In December, I published my non-fanboy review of the DJI Mavic Mini. If you haven't seen it, follow the link on screen now. It goes into great detail on the pros and cons of the Mini. To summarize my review, I said the DJI Mavic Mini was a remarkable $400 drone, and in many ways it flew and photographed like a drone twice its price. That said, it had a few very significant flaws. Some were limits to what you would expect with an inexpensive drone like this. Other shortcomings, particularly some limitations to the camera settings, were inexplicable to me. Among those kinds of faults with the Mavic Mini were... At the time of its release, the Mavic Mini was basically a point-and-shoot camera for video. You could adjust your EV compensation and you could lock your exposure. However, you could not control shutter speed or ISO, so people who want to shoot with a shutter speed twice the frame rate, the general rule of thumb for smooth video, were out of luck. Companies sold neutral density filters for the Mini, but if you can't control or even identify what your shutter speed is, those filters didn't make a lot of sense. Unlike any modern camera I've seen that costs more than $30, the Mavic Mini didn't allow you to set or lock the white balance. As you can see on screen now, in unusual lighting situations, the white balance can actually shift as the camera records, causing the colors to change unexpectedly. It's a problem that occurs infrequently, but it's more likely to occur in awesome lighting situations like dawn or dusk, and you can lose some beautiful shots because of it. One other issue that others identified was the Mavic Mini did not allow you to shoot 24 frames per second video. This is a very popular setting for people who want to create smoother videos and the Mini didn't have it. I'm extremely happy to report that these three problems have been resolved. In the latest version of the DJI Play app, version 1.1.0, and the current firmware version for the Mini, version 01.00.0500, DJI has responded to customer feedback and enhanced the Mini's video capability. Here you can see the DJI Play app. With the camera set to video, you can see that in Auto I can adjust the EV and set an AE lock to freeze my exposure. However, if I tap on the M icon for Manual, you can see that I can now manually set the shutter speed and the ISO. Not only do you control your settings and have a legitimate use for neutral density filters, but you don't experience fluctuations in lighting as conditions change as you would in auto, with AE lock turned off. And that's pretty much how the higher priced camera drones work, so that's great news. You can also adjust your white balance. DJI hid this feature in an unusual spot, but it's there. If you click on the three dots in the upper right corner, tap the camera tab, then tap Advanced Shooting Settings. You'll see that your camera is set to Auto White Balance, but you can change it to Manual. Then, you can slide the slider up and down to choose the correct Kelvin setting for your lighting conditions. This is a big improvement for the Mini, but it's not perfect. As I said, it's buried in a menu unlike other camera settings. Also, I'd like it better if you could lock your white balance in auto, and it's a shame that they don't have the presets like daylight, cloudy, sunset, etc. But this update is still extremely important for people who want to use the Mini as something more than a point and shoot, and this adds a tremendous amount of value to the drone. Finally, if you look at the video settings for 2.7K video, you see that you can now shoot at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. At 1080p, they have added 24 and 48 frames per second. 
Many people prefer shooting at 24 frames per second, believing it provides a more cinematic look to the footage. Now Mavic Mini owners have that option. All in all, this is a huge upgrade for the Mini, and it significantly affects my overall view of the drone. Now, remember, this is a no-fanboy zone, so I still have to point out that not all the Mavic Mini's problems are fixed. Obviously, the Mini is still a light gray, making it very difficult to see in flight. Make it black or red, or put a black bottom on it, and it would be a much safer drone. The Mini is still very susceptible to wind. At best, it requires you to fly in sport mode just to bring your Mini back in conditions that other drones could handle with no problem. At worst, you are much more likely to lose control of your Mini due to wind than any other camera drone on the market. And it still shoots at a maximum of 2.7K resolution. For most cameras being sold nowadays, 4K is the standard. In December, I said the Mavic Mini was a remarkable $400 drone for beginners, hobbyists, and travelers, offering capabilities and operational quality that you'd expect from drones twice as expensive. As long as you could accept the limitations of this drone, you'd find it a great value for your money. With these updates, the Mini is an even better value for hobbyists, and now it should meet the needs of drone operators who are more serious about photo and video quality as well. This will also be a terrific drone for travelers, as long as you accept its inability to fly in wind. With the Mavic Mini now available and the Mavic Air 2 on the way, DJI looks to solidify its place as the consumer drone market leader for the rest of 2020 at least. Do you want to buy a DJI Mavic Mini? Follow the link in the description below and get it straight from DJI. I've already published tutorials for the Mavic Mini and I'll be adding more. I also plan to do head-to-head -head comparisons between the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air, Mavic Air 2, Femi X8 SE 2020, and the Autel Evo. Check out the playlist on screen now for all the Mavic Mini videos, but be sure to subscribe so you'll know when more videos are released. Thanks for watching.